everybody. I can see we've got uh, an awful lot of you uh, in today. I can't see the, um, the chat room, um, but uh, feel free, as, as Yasmina said, ask your questions. I always um, leave plenty of time for answering questions at the end. Um, uh, looking through the attendees, I see uh, welcome to Jeff from the Microsoft Malware Protection Center. Um, if, you, um, if you feel like you want to help answer questions in the, uh, in the chat room, then, uh, then feel free. Um, or he may just be spying. So what have we got? We've got manually removing viruses and malware from uh, Windows 7. Now, first of all, let's start with um, the question that you're, uh, you're probably asking, and that is, who am I? So I am uh, the author of Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out from Microsoft Press and Office 365 Security Essentials. Um, both, of, both books are available on Amazon. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP awardee um, for Windows Expert and the author of several um, forthcoming books on Windows 8, three of them in fact. Um, so they'll, be, they'll all be out in the autumn. They include Windows 8 Out of the Box for O'Reilly and Troubleshoot and Optimize Windows 8 Inside Out for Microsoft Press. And um, as I say, they'll be out for the launch um, for the launch of Windows 8. And uh, after a sh short break in the summer, I'll be back um, in the autumn with more, um, a couple of refresher troubleshooting Windows 7 webcasts, and then um, looking at, uh, at Windows 8 um, in depth. So, what do I want to talk about in this presentation? Well, I want to talk about how malware infects your computer. Um, how does, how does malware prevent you from removing it, um, how you can actually remove it, and look at some of the tools that are available online to help you do this. Now, Windows 7 is, some security researchers claim, the most secure operating system on the planet. And I'm not just saying that because Jeff's in. Uh, because Jeff's in. Um, I genuinely believe that Windows 7 is incredibly, is incredibly secure, and that is why um, malware writers these days try and trick the user into installing the malware and giving it permission in order to actually install. And this is something that I'm going to look at in the presentation. I find it hugely ironic that this webcast, I mean, if you're watching this later on on Safari, then you, won't, you may not get the irony of this, but this webcast is going out live on the day when I'm not only writing the how to remove viruses chapter for the next troubleshooting book, um, but also on the day when it's been announced that um, Apple Mac computers and OS X have been, um, 600,000 of them apparently, according to uh, reports, have been hit by um, a Trojan. So it doesn't matter what operating system you use or how secure you, people might tell you it is or how secure you might believe it is, you can still be tricked into installing malware. And this would have been the case on the Mac where um, people would have, been, would have been tricked into, into allowing the install. So let's have a look at how malware does actually infect uh, the computer. <clears throat> so the common, common ways that malware will get into your computer through infected websites, probably absolutely number one, um, plugins and codes and codecs. By plugins, I mean um, browser tool, web browser toolbars, especially these um, search toolbars or, or ones that offer to um, uh, create a little cartoon picture of yourself, no matter how tempting that might be. Even I found that tempting. <clears throat> um, codecs are um, uh, little um, interpreters, little programs required to play certain types of audio and video on your computer. Uh, pirated software, if you download pirated software from um, torrent websites and file sharing websites, it's very common to get, pirated, uh, to get pirated software with malware in it. And I promise you that if you, if you when, when Windows 8 begins to come out, if you look for pirated versions of Windows 8 off the torrent site so you haven't got to pay for it, I promise you it will come preloaded with malware. So I don't recommend you do that at all. 
Um, removable storage is another way. Um, malware loves to put itself on a USB flash drive when you, uh, uh, when you plug that into a computer and then you can take that around the office or take that around to a, uh, a friend's house and you can plug it in and, and, uh, and it can also run off, off that removable storage. Common document formats, it's much less common these days with the security um, that's been beefed up within Microsoft for Word and Excel uh, and PowerPoint document um, macro viruses to exist. Um, at the moment, the most common document format that's actually attacked by malware is Adobe's PDF format. Um, so if you use, um, if, uh, there are two ways around this. Firstly, you can use a, a third party um, PDF reader software on your computer because it's actually the Adobe reader software that, that, they, that they attack. So you could use a third party software. Um, uh, or um, alternatively, if you use the Adobe reader, then just keep the automatic updating on, uh, turned on for that so that um, you always have the latest security updates coming through from, uh, from Adobe. And they, they release them quite frequently. I mean, I see them you know, once every couple of months. And then there's email attachments where people will um, send emails through with, commonly with documents uh, attached to them. So computers, as I've said, they can't infect themselves. Um, if you have your computer and you sit and you, and you leave it in a corner of the room and you don't do anything with it, it will never go wrong and it will never get infected. Um, and nothing, nothing can, ever go, can ever happen to it because in order for something to go wrong with a computer, in order for a computer to get infected with malware, a human has to do something. And this is why, and I can't stress this enough, criminals will always try and trick you into installing malware. So you might think that something is completely legitimate. Let's say you've had uh, an email from a friend um, saying, hey, look at this picture of Britney Spears, or look at this compromising picture of Mitt Romney, or, you know, I, you know I, I don't live in the US, so I'm not political. Let's say, look at this picture of Barack Obama as, as, as well. Let's, let's, let's be fair. Um, then what you might want to do is just email that person directly. Don't reply to the email, but email that person directly and just say, look, I've received this email from you. Did you intend to send it to me? Because if their email um, account has been hacked or compromised or they have malware on the computer that's sending out emails, um, then this sort of thing could go out without them knowing about it uh, at all. So always check if something appears to be legitimate, appears to me from a friend, a family member, or a colleague, especially if it's a person you haven't heard from in a while, um, <clears throat> then always check. It's exactly the same when you're on social networks. Facebook does it. Um, malware on Facebook does it uh, an awful lot. You'll get malware on Twitter, much less. But Facebook, it's actually, it's actually quite common. Now, I was talking about um, being tricked into installing malware. Now, one of the biggest is um, fake, um, it says fake malware, it's supposed to say fake antivirus software. There's a, uh, a little typo. Um, <clears throat> what will happen with this is that you will go to a website and the website will tell you that it has detected um, hundreds, maybe even thousands of viruses and, and bits of malware and trojans and everything on your computer. First of all, Unless you specifically authorize a website to scan your computer, it can't do that. Modern security um, web browsers, all the, the latest versions of Internet Explorer and Chrome and Firefox or you know, whatever it is you use, they simply don't permit it. You. you can't have websites automatically running programs in your, in your web browser. It's just insecure. <clears throat> so for starters, if a website tells you, uh, tells you that, it's lying. But I'll talk to, talk to you later on about some of the specific things you can do in web browsers to scan your computer. So what these things typically do, and I was writing about this just this morning for the, uh, uh, for the Windows 8 book, is that they will um, they'll say, well, we can get rid of all these viruses and we can get rid of this malware, but in order to do this, you have to download our software. <clears throat> so you download their software, which is, you know, looks like antivirus software. Um, it's in, in the case of the one here, 
It's called Windows 7 Antivirus 2012. Um, and it appears to behave like antivirus software, but what it will do is it will scan your computer and it will say, well, I can remove these viruses, but you need to upgrade to the full version, and that will cost you. This will cost you $30 or whatever it costs. And it might seem perfectly reasonable, but you pay for it, and then it says, right, okay, I've removed all the viruses. But you didn't have any viruses. It's lying to you. It's just saying that. But, of course, by this point, they've not only got your credit card details and other information such as um, a password, which, you know, it's, you may only have one or two passwords that you use, so they've got access to that, possibly your email account. They'll have your date of birth. They'll have other information that they'll have taken. And in downloading the full version of this software, you will give permission for it to install and give full permissions for it to install, and this is, you know, the sort of thing that would have happened on the Apple Mac, is uh, you then have a, a really nasty bit of malware um, on your computer that might do absolutely anything because you've actually given it permission to be there. Um, so if any, um, if any website that you ever go to says, we have found all these viruses and trojans and bits of malware on your computer, then it it just hasn't. Just close the window and go somewhere else. Um, sometimes, occasionally, perfectly legitimate websites, including a uh, website that, that I write for, was hacked. Um, well, it's not hacked. It's, it's, it's done, through, done through an advert. Um, and the advert is specially coded in such a way. So, so it might be a perfectly legitimate website that you go to um, where one of these things sneaks through from time to time, but um, just ignore them. So malware does a very good job at protecting itself. So when you want to go and remove it, um, you will find that you'll shut it down and it will start up again, and shut it down and it will start up again. You'll try and shut it down a different way and it will start up again. Really good at protecting itself. One of the most annoying things is that if you boot into safe mode in Windows, it probably won't help. You probably still won't be able to remove the malware because you'll shut it down and it will start itself up again. And you end up in locked in this cycle because malware writers know that the first thing you're going to try and do is, oh, well, I'll boot into safe mode. Not much runs in safe mode. So they write their malware in such a way as to make sure that... Um, if you boot into safe mode, the malware is still active and you can't shut it down. So it will also disable your security software in um, Windows. It will try and shut down your firewall. It will try and shut down your antivirus software or it will um, prevent the antivirus software from updating. It may prevent Windows Update from working. I mean, this is especially if you've got something like the fake antivirus, which, um, has, which you've accidentally given permission to be there. Um, then, you know, it will, it will have permission to do pretty much anything it wants, and it will interfere with your own protection. And one of the, the, the main reasons, of course, why it interferes with your own protection is because your antivirus software, when it gets an update, will look at this and will say, hang on a minute, You've got a virus on this computer, and of course the virus doesn't want your antivirus software to tell you that it's there. So it will uh, do whatever it can to protect itself. So here we've got, oh yes, it will, another thing it can do is it can completely cripple your operating system and it can completely cripple your computer. Now. This is rare because most malware these days is viruses. My, the first virus I ever got on a computer was in 1991 on an aging old Olivetti PC. And all it did was play Yankee Doodle Dandy to me every day at 5 o'clock, which was, I mean, it wasn't even really annoying. It was a little bit fun. Um, but these days, malware is, is, is an industry. It's, it's there to serve to serve a big financial purpose and and to get criminal huge volumes of money millions of millions of dollars for criminal gangs 
So it, they don't want your computer to be crippled. They want your computer to be able to send out spam emails and attack other computers and attack Amazon and Google and web servers um, all around the world. But occasionally, a virus can um, cripple your copy, either your copy of Windows um, or your computer in very serious in very serious ways. They can attack the um, the BIOS firmware on the motherboard and wipe it. Um, they can they can do all all manner of of horrible and nasty things. Windows 8 is introducing new technologies that will um, help prevent a great many of these problems and help stop things like root kits from getting in and, and, and starting automatically um, when you when you go and start your computer. But Windows 7 doesn't have these protections, but it is it is very rare. So how can you remove malware? Well, there are several ways. One of the ways is that you can physically remove the hard disk from your computer, and you can attach it to another computer via a, a hard disk dock. I've got a hard disk dock quite similar to this one here, uh, or via um, uh, a, a USB cable that plugs into the plugs into the hard disk. And you can then plug that into another computer. Don't run anything on it because you run the risk of activating the malware and then infecting the computer you've just plugged the hard disk into. But it's perfectly okay to, okay to scan it with antivirus software, see if you can find anything, and um, let the antivirus software on the host computer remove it. Because if you physically take a hard disk out of your computer, um, if you can, if you've got a desktop uh, PC, then um, and, and you put it into a dock and you treat it as a, a slave hard disk on another machine, then there's no way that antivirus software can run because you're not booting from Windows on that hard disk. It's a slave device. You're just accessing, accessing it via USB. So that can be a good way of getting rid of it. But new malware, you know, it might be several days, even several weeks, um, before the antivirus vendors um, have um, solutions to actually remove it. That's, that's even, you know, if they spot it in the first place. I mean, um, who knows how many viruses may be out there at any one time um, without protection because it takes, it takes time for security companies and it takes time for Microsoft and Google and all these companies work together. They all share this information, so it helps speed things up. But it takes some time to actually dissect these viruses and figure out how to um, remove them safely without damaging your copy of Windows and damaging your software. Now, let's say, for instance, you've got a, a laptop or an all-in-one PC uh, where you can, uh, and this is where the guy from, from Microsoft will probably be taking a sharp intake of breath. What's this about Linux? Um, but you can download on, a, on another computer. Um, you can download a, a full copy of, of Linux. Ubuntu is, is uh, my personal favorite because it's um, incredibly easy to use. And you can put, burn it onto a DVD, and you can put it into your computer, and you can boot from it. You haven't got to install Linux on your computer. Um, you can just boot from the DVD. And if you boot from the DVD, then you can work on your computer's hard drive. But because you haven't started your copy of Windows, you haven't, start, you haven't got the virus running. The downside is that Ubuntu doesn't generally tend to come with antivirus software um, because Ubuntu doesn't get attacked because it's, not, um, it's only got something like 1% you know, of the overall market. Um, it's not worth um, criminals attacking. So that's a downside. But if, there, but if, if there's an easy fix, you can um, start your computer in this way and you can remove it like that. Now, <clears throat> about uh, getting an easy fix, you need to bing it on preferably another computer. Uh, because bearing in mind, if you, if you have malware on your computer, it's going to do everything it can to stop you from removing it. So it will look at what you type into Internet Explorer or what you type into you know, another browser, and it will look for you looking for its 
its name or, or any reference to a virus. Now, you'll only know what its name is if your antivirus software has popped up something saying, ah, oh, well, we found this virus, but we can't get rid of it. Um, it's actually very common for your antivirus software to be able to, to, to identify it, um, but if it's particularly stubborn, it simply won't be able to get rid of the thing. So when you've got its name, you can look it up online. If you can't get its name, then um, normally, you know, where I said removing the hard disk and plugging it into a, plugging it into a dock um, and doing a scan on another computer, even if that can't get rid of it, it, it you ought to be able to get the, get the name. But there are some other tools that I'm going to uh, show you anyway. So you'll type, you'll see here I've got a little plus sign in front of each word, and that's that, that plus sign guarantees that that word appears in the search results. And, um, and you can have a minus as well to guarantee that a word doesn't appear. So you could go to semantic.com, you could go to McAfee, and you could look up this virus and you can get the removal instructions. And it will normally detail quite, sometimes quite complicated, but sometimes relatively straightforward and certainly written in plain English, removal instructions for the piece of malware. <clears throat> so what sort of things are these removal instructions going to tell you to do? The first thing is going to be disabling these malware services. Now, services are little parts of Windows, little Windows components and little third-party components that run in the background that, that manage things like um, printing and displaying items on your screen. And this is where I say that if you shut something down with malware, it'll just start up again, because what will happen is malware will typically have two, three, four little of these little services running in the background, and if any one of them sp uh, spots that another one is shut down, it will just start it up again. <clears throat> so what will happen is that the removal instructions will tell you to disable the services in a very specific order in order to make sure that the malware is definitely um, shut down. And this is how you will, actually dis you will actually disable it. So you would type services into the search box in the start menu. It's the easiest way to get to it. Now, do be careful when you're shutting down services, which you can do by right-clicking on them and uh, pressing the, the, stop button, uh, the stop link in the context menu that appears. Do be very careful. Reason being that if you shut down the, the wrong service, remember that these are all, all the critical things that that run Windows, that are Windows, are all services. And if you shut down the wrong thing, you can render your computer completely um, useless, and then you have to restart it and start, and start all over again. So be careful to follow the instructions um, to the letter. After you've disabled the services, the instructions will commonly want you to go into the registry and delete registry entries. You get into the registry by, as it says here, typing reg edit into the search box in the start menu. And again, be extremely, be even more careful here, because if you shut down a service in Windows, then the next time you start your operating system, um, that, or then that service will restart, um, unless it's, you know, it's been specifically removed. Um, so if you shut down a Windows service, then it will restart. But if you delete something in RegEdit, then when you re reboot your computer, it's still gone. It's still deleted. And it's the registry that tells these which services to start up to begin with. So the service might still be there, but if, it's, if there isn't a registry command telling it to start, it can't. So if you inadvertently delete a registry entry for a bit of software that you've installed or a hardware driver you, you've installed or even um, a Windows component, then um, you can permanently damage your, your copy of Windows and you can restore from a backup or um, you can, um, you know, you can uh, have to reinstall Windows from scratch. So always be extremely careful when you're using RegEdit to follow the instructions, the antivirus removal instructions to the letter. Now, one way of getting the, the instructions, <clears throat> I do say about looking on another computer. You don't always have another computer, so where else can you, where else can you look? Well, 
if you've got a smartphone, that'll have a browser on it. So you can type the name of the malware and remove into the smartphone, and you can get the removal instructions there. Um, you could do it if you've got a if you've got a tablet, um, then you could do it on your on your tablet. It doesn't need to be on another computer. Um, people commonly overlook smartphones um, for this sort of thing, but they're an excellent way to get um, quality um, information quickly when you need it. So they're very very useful because the information there is is directly to hand. <clears throat> so then, with the services shut down and with the registry keys removed and the virus inactive, then you're going to um, see instru you're, you're going to follow instructions on how to remove the virus files themselves. So you'll need to display all the, the Windows hidden files because uh, very commonly because it's, it's, it's going to be extremely rare that a virus is just going to let its files sit there and say, hey, hey look at us. Um, they, it's going to hide them. So you'll want to uh, just, you want to show all the all your hidden and and your system files, and you can do this in Windows Explorer. You've got an organize button in the uh, uh, on the toolbar at the top left, and pull that down, and then you've got your file and folder options. And in the window that pops up with the file and folder options, you've got little check boxes for showing hidden files, and a uh, little a little dot radio box uh, for show. Um, hidden operating system files as well. Do remember to hide the system files and hide the, the hidden files again afterwards when you're finished. Um, the whole reason that they're, that they're hidden from you is to stop you deleting them or moving them accidentally. You know, you look at this folder and you think, oh, it's like, oh, I don't need this. What, what, what's this folder do? I don't need it. And the, you delete that folder and then you discover the Windows won't, won't reboot. So that's why they're hidden. <coughs> So once you've um, turned on the, the hidden uh, system files views, you can then, in Windows Explorer, go onto your Windows drive and you can find the virus. It's now been disabled, but you need to remove its files. And again, the instructions will tell you how to do this. Now, this has all been quite technical, and it does rather imply that you can get online and you can get the um, that the, the instructions exist, <clears throat> and you can find the text instructions because they can be difficult to find. So I just want to show you a couple of uh, free tools that you can download that can uh, do the job for you, that you can run from, uh, you can burn onto a CD, onto a DVD, or you can even copy onto a USB pen drive, and they'll help you with this. And then you can start your computer from that, and then that can get rid of the virus. Because unlike if you start your computer from a Linux disk where you haven't got any antivirus software, um, the virus is disabled because you haven't started your copy of Windows on the, on the main PC. <clears throat> but it's difficult to remove. Well, if you boot from a disk that's actually got these virus removal tools, malware removal tools on them, um, then things are much simpler. Now there's two that um, I'm particularly fond of. Uh, one of which are all the tools available from security firm McAfee. Um, for years now they've offered these standalone tools um, for removing malware from PCs. And here's a web address I really do recommend. Keep a copy of this. Keep this bookmarked. McAfee.com slash US slash downloads slash free hyphen tools. And there's all sorts of uh, tools here um, for removing malware, for uh, removing spyware, and uh, uh, and generally, you know, removing nasties from your computer. So I'll leave that one up there for uh, just a, a moment longer. The, the next one is, isn't completely out yet. It's a new Microsoft tool uh, called System Sweeper. So let's go and have a look at that. Um, you can get um, a, a beta of this at the moment. You need to search for it online uh, because as it's a, a pre-release product, um, there's no final link online for it yet, but you can search for Microsoft System Sweeper. It is essentially a, a copy of Microsoft Security Essentials 
that you run from a, a bootable CD or DVD or a pen drive, and um, you start your computer from essentially Microsoft Security Essentials, and then that will, um, with a few little bit extra bells and whistles that it has, that it has, that can get rid of viruses and malware for you as well. And as I say, you have to root around for this at the moment. Um, I'm looking forward to the final release. And uh, um, Jeff, if you're still there, maybe you know where um, you know when we when we can get a final release for this. And um, and that's that's uh, an excellent tool. So <clears throat> now that we've talked all about that, how can we prevent malware from getting onto your Windows 7 computer in the first place? Well, there's three simple rules. Firstly, do not turn off user account control. Now, in Windows Vista, and if you're still using Windows, Windows Vista, then many people believe that user account control is annoying because it pops up too, too much. It's tamed with Windows 7 considerably. User account control is an essential security system in Windows that prevents you from making changes to the computer that can adversely affect Windows, your software, or other users on that computer. And it's really, really important that you don't turn it off. Um, if it pops up an awful lot um, because you're installing new software all the time, then you know it's, 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 it is very important. But if it pops up randomly in the background when you're sort of you know on the internet or something like that, if it pops up randomly in the background, I really would suggest you do a full malware scan because one of the things that malware will do is if if it wants permission to be able to do all sorts of nasty things with your with your computer, um, then periodically it might ask for permission just in the hopes that you look at this user account control prompt on the screen and go, oh, well, I'm tired, I'll just click yes. So you just click yes and, you know, you've, you've given it permission, you don't even know what it was there for. So user account will only ever pop up when you specifically are changing something in Windows or you specifically are installing a piece of software in Windows or sometimes uninstalling a bit of software. and. Uh, if it pops up at any other time, always, always click no. Uh, the next rule is to keep your antivirus software up to date. Um, whichever one you use, be it Microsoft Security Essentials, be it um, AVG has, has had fantastic reviews in the, in the last year. Trend Micro has also had fantastic reviews in the last year. Uh, McAfee, their free, their free download tools are, are brilliant, but the, the antivirus software is not quite so great of late. Um, Kaspersky is very good, but it's quite complicated and more, it's more for enthusiasts. Um, so whichever antivirus software you use, um, please always make sure it's up to date. And of course, Windows 8 um, will include its own antivirus software, but you can still have third-party antivirus software in Windows 8 should you choose. And the third rule is to be very careful what you click. And I picked the big red button here for a very good reason, um, because you really should never install a toolbar, a codec, a plugin, or anything else unless you specifically went to the website to get it. If you want, if you go to Adobe.com because you want to get the Flash Player or the Acrobat Reader, then fine you install it from directly from there. But if you go to YouTube and you want to watch a video and something pops up saying you need a codec to play this, that is malware. Because you go to YouTube, you go to YouTube as long as you've got the Flash Player installed um, or an HTML5 compatible browser, then no codecs will ever be required. Now, new browsers, um, there are new browsers coming out that won't even support um, uh, plugins and, and, and toolbars at all. Internet Explorer 10 in the new Metro interface in Windows 8 does not will not allow you to install toolbars and plugins, and it's an, an extremely good security feature. Um, if you have an iPad, then you will already be used to not have not being able to see 
Flash or or other content or you know other content like that that requires plugins, because Apple rightly say no, we're not having it. Um, you're not having these um, these plugins at all. So that's the uh, manually removing viruses and malware from Windows 7 uh, presentation. Uh, there's two more before the summer, uh, May the 3rd. Uh, they're always on the first Thursday, uh, my webcasts, always on the first Thursday at the same time. Uh, May the 3rd, building and upgrading a PC, um, especially if you're you're thinking about getting Windows 8 or money is tight, you know, we, we, we're still recovering from a, a global economic downturn. So rather than spend money on a, on a whole new PC, can you get some more power and some more speed out of the computer you already have? And this is going to be with laptops and with desktops. And then in June, on June 7th, uh, managing family safety in Windows 7. So uh, um, obviously one there for families. And then I'll be taking a couple of months off. Uh, and then in the autumn, I'm back in September, October with troubleshooting and advanced troubleshooting for Windows 7. And then with Windows 8 due out, I would imagine at the end of October and then November, uh, we'll start looking at how we can get the very best out of Windows 8. Now, if you want to get in touch with me, I have an open mail bag, um, although I'm writing three books at the, time, uh, at the moment, so I, I can't always respond to everybody as quickly as I would like. Uh, but you can email me at mike at mvps.org, and I, uh, my website is thelongcline.com, where there are regular new articles. Uh, but the best ways to stay up to date and keep in touch are Facebook and Twitter, and definitely at the moment, whilst there aren't a great deal of articles being written because of all these books being written, um, Facebook is where most of the activity is taking place. And if you do join up with Facebook, um, then you can help me pick my um, new promotional photos for 2012 and 2013, uh, because I've had them done, and I can't decide exactly which ones I want to use. So you can, uh, you can help me choose there. So that's, um, that's my presentation. Um, yes, Mina, how, what questions do we have? We have a lot of questions, Mike, as I'm sure you suspected. We'll start in the order they came in. James says, why does McAfee do such a bad job with detection? McAfee once had a, an absolutely fantastic reputation, but this, it's, they, they sort of let it They've sort of let themselves go, and yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, the, the free tools. I still recommend that you can use the free tools like you know Stinger and, and the other ones that you can get. Um, if you already have a virus and you need to boot from those, I, I, I would always recommend those. But for day-to-day -day, um, virus protection, no. Use AVG or or TrueCrypt or um, not TrueCrypt. Um, um, well, you can use Microsoft uh, Security Essentials, AVG, or I can't remember the name of the other one off the top of my head. Um, Trend Micro, that was the other one. Great. And our next one is from Richard, and Richard asks, I have MS updates automatically download, but ask me when to install. However, it seems it always ends up rebooting my PC without my permission, hence losing whatever I had open at the time. How do I stop this? If you type um, update or Windows update into the search box in, um, uh, in the start menu in Windows 7, then you can, uh, you'll see a, a, when Windows update, when the screen appears, um, then you'll see a link on the left-hand side, change Windows update settings. And in there, you can tell it to, for instance, only install updates when you tell it to. Um, and you can you can change the setting in there. Windows Update is is a bit contentious. That's been changed and improved considerably in uh, in Windows 8 now, um, so that this sort of thing doesn't happen. So you don't lose what you've got going on at the time. Thank you. And one from Richard. Richard says, uh, can you please speak of the newest USA threat, which is phone calls from Windows Care Group? Ah oh, yes. Now this is this isn't just in the USA. This is worldwide. Um, this this is actually. Um, I'm glad you brought this up. Actually, um, this is, these are companies that are phoning people up 
randomly and saying, oh, we've remotely detected um, malware on your computer, and uh, we have got the, uh, the, the software f that you can download to fix it, which is going to cost $30. Now, they're lying. They cannot detect malware on your computer. If, if anybody ever phones you up um, out of the blue, cold calling you and says, we've detected malware on your computer, hang up. Just properly hang up. Exactly the same way as if any website ever says, we have detected malware on your computer, just go somewhere else. Um, this, this cold calling problem is getting worse. Thank you. And Jim um, says, you showed a slide that had the hard drive caddy dock. Uh, what is the make and model and price of that? Oh, there's, there's, all, there's all sorts of them. Uh, they're all very similar. They're normally about $20. Um, they're not very expensive. Um, and if you've got a USB 3, USB 3 sockets on your computer, you can get USB 3 ones, and they're significantly faster than, than USB 2. Um, I think they're great. I've got one. Um, and I really need it this week for a problem on one of my hard disks, and I've lent it to a friend um, 200 miles away, but never mind. I'll get it back eventually. <laughs> okay. And Yuri says, uh, can you recommend some antivirus uh, software to use on Linux OS? Um, honestly, no. Linux isn't my isn't isn't my thing, um, to be to be honest. But um, nobody really attacks Linux. But I mean, regardless of what operating system you have, even if it's um, OS X on the Mac, always have antivirus software. I do apologise for the noise. This is my my dog has decided he's going to uh, get very active all of a sudden. Great. And Jeff, um, he says, Mike, are you familiar with Windows Defender Offline? Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, there's all sorts of things that are, that are creeping up. Windows Defender, off, Windows Defender Offline, um, um, I'm not sure. It sounds, it sounds remarkably like a, a, a new name for the Microsoft System Sweeper, so um, that might be one to uh, – uh, I'll, I'll have a look about that one. Great. And – Looks like Michael says, how do you know specifically what malware is running on your computer in order to delete it? Ah, oh, well, this is, a, this is an interesting one because the reporting that you get is only as good as the antivirus software that you use. So if you're using um, antivirus, I mean, McAfee's been, been brought up. Um, let's say you're using McAfee, and, and, and McAfee only detects, let's say, 96% of all malware, whereas AVG will detect 99% of all malware, well, what's it missing? You could have malware on your computer and not even know that it's there. So this is why you can have your antivirus software updated regularly and as often as, often as, you, you, know, as, as you want to, but if it's not detecting anything, then you might still have malware there. So this is why I always say, uh, be careful what you click on online, and uh, be careful what um, attachments you, you open in uh, that you're sent and what documents people send you. Perfect. And we have a question from Adrian. Um, Adrian asks, is MS's Strider Ghostbuster rootkit tool integrated into Security Essentials slash Defender Offline already? No idea, to be honest with you. That's an interesting one. Um, I'll look. At, I'll look that up and get back to you. If you email me at mike at mvps.org, I can look this up and get and get back to you. Um, but these things are changing all the time. Great. And um, another one here from Ashok. Is there any way to throat the antivirus process utilization CPU and MEM? Um, if you. Presumably, you're saying if if uh, if you have something like a bot in the background that's um, sending out huge volumes of spam or, or helping in a, a denial of service, distributed denial of service attack somewhere, um, the only way to 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 do it is to go through the full removal procedure for the malware itself. Great. And Jim um, would like to know if you could talk a little bit about malware bytes. Malwarebytes, I used to use Malwarebytes all the time, 
um, because I found that Malwarebytes protection is very effective. And Malwarebytes itself, um, if, you, if you suspect you have a virus um, or that somebody else has one um, and you want to get rid of it, then downloading the free version of Malwarebytes. Malwarebytes, I have found, will find things that no other antivirus software will find. It's absolutely superb. The only reason I personally have stopped using it is because it's done a bit of an AVG and it's starting to get really annoying on the pop-up adverts. Um, but generally speaking, it's a fantastic product. Great. And we have another one from Yuri. Um, how will malware affect my PC if I use a limited account? Um, if, you have a, if you have a limited account, um, well, if you're a standard user on Windows 7, then you can only do things that don't affect other users. But there's no – malware is changing and evolving all of the time, and you don't know what it can do. You could still have a bot on there that's sending out huge volumes of spam or um, helping in a distributed denial of service attack somewhere. If you're on – let's say you're on a fair use Internet, um, uh, internet account with your ISP, um, or you're even, you know, worse, you're on mobile broadband on 3G or 4G network, then you'll probably, you could find that the, that the malware is chewing through all of your, um, your bandwidth and you end up with an enormous bill at the end of it. Um, so always that's, that's the sort of thing that, it, that com most commonly that it would do. Great. And our final question is from Werner. And Werner um, says, why not use free Kaspersky with emergency boot that has included antivirus instead of Ubuntu without antivirus? Yeah, well, you, it's becoming increasingly common um, for antivirus vendors to introduce new, uh, new features such as um, a, a boot CD or a boot DVD. Um, they are they are excellent if you're ch if you're looking for one to buy, and it's all, it's always going to be the it's, it well it's almost always going to be the paid for suites. Um, if you're looking for, for one to buy, then um, it's definitely worth considering. There's all sorts of uh, all sorts of things out there at the moment, um, but as I say, I mean I personally just just use Microsoft Security Essentials. That's good enough for me um, because I'm always very very vigilant about what I click on. Um, and I'm always careful about what I open on my computer, but this is my job, so I, I know what to look out for, um, so I can get by with that. So if, you're, if, you, you, know, if you consider yourself fairly, uh, fairly savvy and streetwise and tech savvy, then normally a, a free tool like Microsoft Security Essentials, such as I use, will be absolutely fine. Um, but some of the other um, more advanced suites um, can be you know, excellent for um, less experienced users. Thanks, Mike. Oh, it looks like we have just a couple more that just came in. Um, question from Luna. Uh, she says, in reference to malware and antivirus protection, will all of it be better in Windows 8? What do you think of Windows 8? Um, for the, well, Windows 8 is the first version of Windows to have antivirus built in. Um, it's called Windows Defender. Um, but don't confuse it with Windows Defender that you've seen in Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. It's actually a rebadged version of Microsoft Security Essentials, and it's there. It's, it's turned on by default. It's you know will update and um, and scan on a regular basis, um, and it's you know it's extremely good that antivirus software is is built in um, by default. I know some antivirus vendors are, are going to cry foul. Um, but it's just needed. It's needed in every, in every operating system. Um, elsewhere with Windows 8, some of the security things that they've added, are, you know, some of them are equally contentious, such as um, the secure boot system um, that's going to be mandatory for all PCs that you buy from um, the big companies such as Dell, HP, a, um, you know, Asus, Samsung, um, is there to stop... Um, malware from starting when you first start your computer and you know some people have said well you know I can't dual boot my system into Linux because this, uh, this, this system 
prevents it. Well, I think it's worth having. You can turn it off, but it's but it's worth having. Generally, Windows 8 is I, I, Windows 7 is is fantastic and really secure. Windows 8 is just more secure than really secure. Okay, we'll just take one more here from um, looks like Jerry Fulton. Jerry says, "What is your opinion of Wind Patrol?" Not personally familiar with Wind Patrol, um, so I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to express express an opinion. But it's certainly not a name that comes up as one of the, you know, one of the the, the best antivirus and uh, antivirus packages. There are other ones that that are out there that that are popular, um, Avast um, and um, Clamwin. Um, they're, they're smaller antivirus and anti-malware packages, and some of them are perfectly okay. Um, I would suggest if you're ever, um, ever uh, worried about it, then if you go to uh, your local um, magazine, go to your local news agent and look at the computer magazines, you may find one. Um, doing a, a group test of antivirus software. Um, they, each magazine will do this once a year, so if there's 12 magazines, you've got a chance of finding one that month. And um, uh, you can always search online for antivirus tests and find the latest antivirus tests and see which um, software is, is scoring particularly highly. But remember, this can change. I mean, you can get a bit of software that um, does performs you know, in outside the top ten one year and is number one the following year and then outside the top ten the following year. So just because something has done brilliantly or has done terribly in the past doesn't mean that isn't going to change. Okay. 